All right, so this is day two of our SEO class search engine optimization. And I've given you the folder with last week's items, and we will have new items today. And so if you look inside the folder of, of our class, you'll see some handouts. The uh, syllabus is there. So if you are new this week, there's our syllabus, what we're covering. If you didn't get the syllabus or didn't take it with you last time, there it is. Notes, I wrote some notes during class and, and I put them into the folder there. And many notes that I write today, I'll put them in there as well. And I gave you SEO sheet number one. That was our long tail strategy. So that was talking about these concepts of developing keywords to use on our site. Today, we'll talk about how to use them on our site and such. Sheet one is for you to think about what your keywords are, and then today we'll talk about how to use them. And I've got two new handouts for you here that we'll look at together. Number two, Webmaster Tools, and number three, Backlinks. The concept of backlinks is one of the big ones, one of the modern tactics for SEO. In short, let me make a note here, backlinks. Also known as inbound links, incoming links, links to my site. So backlinks are links from someone else's site that point to my site. So one of the aspects of modern SEO that the search engines look at, because they look at a lot of information, and we'll see that information once we set up the webmaster tools. One of the things that the search engines look at is how popular is your site in terms of are other people linking to your site? Are other sites linking to your site? So if I've got a website about cooking, let's say I have a passion for cooking and I want to blog about it. I want to write blog posts about cooking, all my recipes and such. I want links from other cooking sites to also link to my site. So this is actually relevant links to your site. Because if I'm a cooking site and I get a link from a shoe site, if I get a link from a pet shop site to my cooking site, it doesn't make sense. Not just getting any links to my site is the answer. Getting relevant links to my site is the answer. And we will see the, the, the challenges of that because in the old days, I would, uh, I would, I would go to a service provider and buy my domain, I would buy like 10 domain names, victorsdesigns.com, victorsdogwalking.net, uh, victorscookingchannel.org, uh, etc., etc. I would buy a bunch of domains, and I would link them all back to my main domain, which I would say victorscooking.com. All of those links, I would point them back to mine. And in the old days, the search engines would see that and say, that's good. That website has a lot of links back to it. We will rank them better than the competitor. But if I can do that, and I'm a nice guy, so can all the spammers do that. And the spammers can buy a thousand websites and point those 999 links back to one page. And in theory, then, that one page getting a thousand links is an amazing site. Not anymore. As the web evolves, it's more about relevant links. Just because seven sites, 70 sites, 700 sites linked to my site doesn't mean they're all valuable. Maybe, you know, 20 of those are valuable. Actually, that's coming back over here. It's coming back down this way. No, let's, let's make it come back for the moment, and then she can catch it in a moment. Um, so the, the thing is, it's relevant. Uh, it's relevant sites that link to your site. And we'll see the challenges of that because the best sites are relevant sites that you did not ask for. So that's another challenge. Relevant links to your sites that you did not ask for. 
We'll see what that entails <coughs> and the challenges of that. But um, that's why I've got these two handouts for you. One of them is titled Backlinks. We'll look at that second. But the first one is titled SEO. Uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to print your name on that, please. Yeah, every day we, we sign in with that. Last week? Today is a new day. We need to print our name every time on that on that sign in sheet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, who hasn't signed it yet? No, no, I'm giving the handouts here on the, on the computer. Um, so what we will be doing then is setting up the webmaster tools because those allow us to keep track of our backlinks. Those allow us to see where is our traffic coming from. All of this lets us um, see how effective we are being online. Am I getting traffic from Twitter? Am I getting traffic from LinkedIn? Am I getting traffic from other relevant sites? We won't know that until we set up webmaster tools. So every time I teach this part, it's always a little bit of a challenge because either you don't have a website yet, so you can't do anything, or if you do have a website, everyone's got a slightly different kind of website. Maybe someone's got a WordPress site, maybe someone's got a Dreamweaver site, maybe someone has a Wix site. And so I build in a little bit of time to try to help people individually. If we can't get to you in the time that we've got here, we have a little time later. But since we've only got two days to work with instead of the usual four, I can't spend a lot of time helping people individually with this part. What I'll be talking about here, of course, will be recorded and hopefully we'll get you get you up and running. So if you came in a little bit late, the handouts are inside of the computer window at the top left, inside of the classroom data drive Z, and then scroll down to find Campus SEO Friday. And I'm going to look at number two, Webmaster Tools. So everyone open up your number two Webmaster Tools handout. Did everyone sign in? Alright, so you want to open that handout again. You can't print it at the moment because the printer is noisy and distracting. But this handout here goes on to talk about uh, the webmaster tools. We are going to, remember, set ourselves up with Bing and Google. We want to set up the webmaster tools so that each of those search engines tells us relevant information. Um, and so before we uh, look at part one, let's look at page two, that is. Before page one, let's look at page two of this little handout. Page two here is a little bit shorter than page one, but it's very dense in what I'm saying here. And let's look at what I've got. Conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that point. So conversion is often that buzzword that people use in this world of SEO. Conversions. What are your conversions? And basically, you can think of it synonymously with a goal. What have you accomplished? And so here, in my fictional company, I want to sell cupcakes. I want to sell baked goods. There's a lot of steps before that to get to the point where I actually sell those items. Here's some possible tactics. I'm not saying you need to do all of these, but think about how these could be relevant to you. Get followers on Twitter. I want to engage in social media. Twitter has about 320 million users worldwide. Facebook has like one and a half billion users worldwide. Instagram has another 400 million users. 
Uh, Pinterest you has 200 million users. So lots and lots and lots of people use social media. I want to spend some time to try to get followers on Twitter. There's 320 million potential followers. Well, let's say if we break it down to just 1% of 320 million, which is still what? 10,000? 300,000? I don't know. There's lots of people that could still be very interested in your products on Twitter, even if you take it down to 1% of all possibilities. I want to get followers on Twitter because all of social media is a form of marketing. In the real world, what examples of marketing can you tell me about? In the real world, what's marketing? How exactly? Print ad? Yeah. Radio, word of mouth. So print, radio, word of mouth, up billboard up on the side of the road, um, newspaper ad, TV ad, all of that. That's marketing in the real world. In the digital world, modern marketing is all about social media. So I can reach people on Twitter. If I get a hundred followers on Twitter, potentially that's a hundred people that could see my message. I'm gonna tweet, sale this Saturday, use this coupon. People love coupons. So I tweet about that coupon and I've got 100 followers. That unfortunately does not mean those 100 followers are going to drop everything they're doing and go buy your product, even though you're dangling a coupon in front of them. Let's say, again, 1% uh, of your followers will. What's 1% 100, what's 1 of 100 followers? One. One potential follower out of 100 could be the most dedicated to actually buy your product from your tweet. And that sounds like a very low value, but that's realistic because it's very easy for us to be on Twitter all day long, Facebook, whatever, but it's a lot harder for us to move the mouse over to that buy now button, and it's even harder to take out our wallet and get that credit card. So 1% is a good measuring stick to figure out how well you're doing. So the more followers I get, what if I get 1,000 followers? What's 1% 1 of 1,000? 10. 10 people bought my product with a thousand followers. What if I've got 10,000 followers? Well, that's a hundred that could have gone followed, followed through. And you might be very effective on Twitter. You might have a great product on Twitter. You might have a more rabid fan base, a more dedicated fan base. And actually, maybe you've got 25% of your followers that are very dedicated enough to buy. Okay, so out of 100 followers, that's 25. Out of 1,000, that's whatever. Out of 10,000, that's whatever. So the more followers I get on Twitter, the more I have potential people that will actually buy my product, my cupcakes. So the point of that, more followers, more Twitter followers, could equal more buyers. Again, whatever you're trying to do online, if I'm just trying to get fame for my watercolor paintings, same thing. The more people that follow me on Twitter and know about my art show and such and my portfolio, the more people can know about my watercolor paintings. Whatever you're trying to do online. That's one goal I could go for and once I've actually gotten more followers, that's a conversion. Because there are people that are not my followers yet and then there are people that have become my followers. That's a conversion. They've converted from non-follower to follower. Another goal I could have is get social interactions, which are likes, shares, or comments on Facebook. Again, I want to get more followers on Facebook. Facebook calls them likes. I want to get more likes on Facebook. Uh, in short, the more likes I get, the more people will see my content. So again, I'm going to share um, sale this Saturday or you know like us for exclusive content. I'm using Facebook to build another audience. Whenever I post anything, I want likes, shares, and comments. And especially on Facebook, what happens is that uh, Facebook wants to sh wants that whenever you share anything, it also trickles down to their to their friends and family. So
getting more likes on on Facebook equals more reach. You can reach more people. Now, the algorithm, the technique has changed, and we'll talk about it later. But if you keep in mind, the more likes we have, the more people we've reached, and the more people we can reach. Because you've probably used Facebook, and you see stuff from your friends and family that have that that they have posted or that they have shared from things that they have seen someone sees something from some company that you're not that you haven't liked on Facebook but someone else saw something and they liked it so much they shared it to their friends to you and now you saw something that you didn't see originally but were referred to it by friends so that original post on Facebook got more reach because one of your friends showed it to you you want that as well. You post something on Facebook and you want your 20 friends, your 200 friends, whatever, every one of your friends to hopefully share it so that it goes out further. So getting more likes on Facebook, in short, helps you reach more people. The more people you reach, the more followers you get. The more followers you get, the more of an audience you have. So it's a, it's a self-fulfilling cycle. Maybe get site visits via Google Plus. I want to get visits to my website uh, on Google Plus. I mean through Google Plus. So Google Plus is another social network. It's from Google itself. Google is tied into Google Plus is tied into Google Search, the biggest search engine. So setting up a Google Plus page could equal more traffic. Now, I should say that for all of these, this is could get more buyers, could get more reach, could get more traffic. None of this is guaranteed. The more you do this, the more you understand how it works, the more it could possibly happen. But I want to set up a Google Plus page. Because when people search, have you noticed some people that when you search, their results page looks nicer than other people? They're on a map and all of that? That's because they've got a Google Plus page and they, that could draw more traffic to your site. Question? Uh, how about Instagram? All of social media is very valuable <clears throat> because people are on these things all day long. So it's going to depend on your business if Instagram is relevant to you. Instagram is very visual, and if you don't have a very visual presence, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult to get on Instagram if you're a motivational speaker. You're just going to show a picture of yourself over and over. You're the, you're the product. Uh, if you've got actual products like cupcakes and such, I can easily post a bunch of stuff to Instagram because it's that cupcake that I want to sell. Mm -hmm. So all of social media will work to a degree, but, it, but each one has its own character and its own style, and that will determine if it's relevant for you. So I could get more traffic to my site. Because all the thing about every social network at the moment, and this will probably change, is that at the moment, us little guys can't sell something directly on social networks. You can buy something off of Pinterest if you're Macy's, if you're Martha Stewart, if you're Sears, if you're these big companies. You can buy something directly from Twitter. Twitter has the ability for you to buy via tweet if you're Amazon, if you're these big companies. At the moment, none of these social networks make it that easy for me to click and buy now right from Facebook, right from a tweet, right from a pin on Pinterest. Later, they will probably activate that for us little people, but for the moment, the big people can do that. That's why you still want to get as much traffic as you can to your website which is your .com, .net, .biz, whatever, or your Etsy, or your eBay, or, <clears throat> or whatever. You still want to drive traffic to where you can actually sell, because you can't sell on social media directly. Question? Um, I use Shopify, and they do actually have a feature now where you can buy on Twitter, and then they can buy on when, when someone clicks that button, does it still eventually take them back to your website? Yeah, so um, it's a little bit different in that I, I don't see it that often, but uh, sometimes you might see it like on Twitter. I see uh, there's if I follow Amazon, Amazon is going to tweet photos of products, and then it says reply now with buy to buy it. 
so that'll actually tie my credit card to Twitter so that when I tweet buy at that product, I'll actually buy it. Eventually, I want that for my business. I want people that when I tweet a picture of a cupcake, they can I can say, uh, reply buy, buy now, and I can actually sell it to them. So I still want traffic to my site because that's where I will actually sell, usually. Next, we've got get more hits on my home page. That's tied to the previous one there. I want to get more traffic to my website because traffic on your website equals ultimate conversion. The ultimate conversion uh, is your is is what is what is your big goal? We had that activity <coughs> last week where we were looking at competitors and such. And we were seeing that competitor or that client, uh, that person online is trying to uh, sell something or get donations to their nonprofit or build awareness of whatever. Whatever the goal of your website is, that's your ultimate conversion. And of course, it can be anything like sell products, get more clients, sell those houses, educate people have people read my political blog, anything. Whatever you're trying to do, ultimately, that's what your website is for. So sometimes people ask me, nowadays, do I still even need a website? I see people using Facebook all day long. I see activity on Twitter. That's for you to decide if you need a website, but usually you will, because at your website is where you have the full control of your message. On Twitter, you can lose you can lose your message. You can try to start a hashtag trend and it gets hijacked and then it becomes negative. And there's no way for you to control that. Twitter is very public for good and for bad. Most social networks, if some crazy people, if mean people, uh, off topic people start to co opt your message on a social network, it's often very times to, to bring it back in line because it's so public, it's a social network. And the companies behind these social networks, they exist in a very interesting place in time because they're, on the one hand, a communications medium like the telephone, but on the other hand, they're a company with a product. So they have to be beholden to those two interests. The telephone company, to some degree, is, is exempt from any crazy thing that people use it for. Yes, terrorists can use the phone and so can my mom and myself. And the phone company lets all the traffic go through, and then when bad stuff happens, we go through the whole legal process. But with uh, social networks, it's the same thing in that people can use these however they want. So for you, that might be that, unfortunately, everyone on Twitter starts to suddenly turn against your message. You said something controversial on accident, and now the message everyone on Twitter, suddenly it seems like everyone on Twitter hates you. It's, all, it's never that bad, but that's what happens. So on your, or that's what could happen. So on your website, though, that's where you have the ultimate control. If people start to post bad things, mean things, off-topic things on your website, it's your website. It's your property. You can delete it. You can't delete anyone else's tweet. You can't delete anyone else's Facebook page. You can try with complaints and such to the companies to try to deal with it, but if it's free speech, it's free speech. And if it's on your website, it's your property, and you're able to delete those comments, and that's not the problems of free speech, because just like in the real world, if there's a crazy person on my front lawn yelling at me, I can tell them, get off my property, I'm calling the cops, and get off my property, and on the sidewalk, you can yell at me all of these crazy things. On my property of my, of my front lawn, you can't do that. Just like on my property of my website, you can't do that. So that's why you still want traffic back to your website. That's where you can get the most control of your message and where you actually sell your products. I want to get more shares on my blog posts from my site. So that's assuming you have a blog, blog on your site. A blog is simply a website where you publish something on a regular basis. Articles. So I've got a web design company, pmdinteractive.com. We've got a blog. In the blog, we give away free information. 
we've heard of Twitter, we've heard of Facebook, Pinterest, etc. Have you heard about the latest social network that just came out this year? If you were in my other classes, don't give it away. But have you heard about the latest social network that just came out? Another one to learn. Peach. Peach is the latest social network. When it came out in January, it was only available for iPhones, but now about a couple weeks ago, now it's on Android too. So here's a new social network for you to learn, to become a pro at. What's the point of all the social networks? To get traffic back to your website. And what I will say about social networks is, I would recommend, so this is off topic down here, about social networks. The point, of course, is to build an audience to build a captive audience to drive traffic. That's the point of social network for you as a business. For you as a person, it's for you to share those funny cat pictures with your family. Great. All of these endeavors are valid. But for a business, it's to build a captive audience to drive traffic and then to decide to, to sell products or whatever. Um, and what I recommend, claim your name on all platforms. I'm not saying use every platform, I'm not saying use every day Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Peach and Snapchat and Tumblr, etc, etc. I'm saying at least claim your name because maybe one day you will want to use Instagram, right now you're discounting it but when it reaches 450 million users, right now it's at 400 million users, and then you say, well, maybe this Instagram thing is going to take off. Let me get on Instagram and, and claim my name and my, do my products. Whoops, someone else took that name. The thing about Twitter is because more than 320 million people use it, the name that you want might be taken. So if you claim your name when these networks come out, at least hold on to that name, and if you'd like to use it later, it'll be there for you. If you didn't claim the name and someone else took it, you have very little resource to get it back. Recourse. Especially if someone else is using it legitimately. There's so many celebrities that wanted to claim their celebrity name on Twitter, but there had been another John Smith on Twitter before them and using it actively and legitimately. Twitter's not going to take away that name for that person and give it to the other person. I think, like for example, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey on Twitter is something like real Jim Carrey because there is another Jim Carrey in Omaha and he's a dentist and he uses <clears throat> Twitter properly. He's not one of these cyber squatters that I go in and I claim names just to take them to one day hope to sell them to the celebrities. That Jim Carrey is a real person. Twitter's not going to take it away when someone is using it legitimately. So the best bet is for you to claim your name on these platforms in case you want to use them in the future. Back to blogging, the point of that is blogging and social media are important aspects of modern SEO. It's not just about those keywords we developed last week. That's minimal. What we need to do now, the new minimal, is also using blogging and social media. And blogging is... Uh, blogging on your site equals more content for the search engines to find. So I have a client, um, a Mexican food restaurant, and they uh, are traditional Mexican food. They're, they're not the classic uh, California burritos. Well, they're not California burritos. They're not nachos. They're not Tex-Mex. They're classic, traditional, authentic Mexican food from Mexico City and such. Uh, their main food is, is a slow-roasted lamb barbecue, not the classic, you know, that you might think carnasada. This is lamb barbecue, slow roasted lamb barbecue in a traditional recipe. They also have many other traditional dishes. One of them is chapulines. Does anyone know what chapulines are? There's a blog post on the website titled, What are chapulines? So if you search on Google, Bing, whatever, and search, what are chapulines? There's a high possibility that that client's blog post that is titled that shows up because it's got the keywords of what people are searching. For. What are chapulines? So then that blog post could show up. More content for the search engines to find. 
So if I've got a, a realty business, and I know that it could be a challenge to buy a house, I could have these blog posts, these articles, and they don't have to be huge, but these articles that are also full of keywords, especially keywords that people might search, such as how to get an FHA loan. I could have a blog post on my Realty site with that question as its title, and people could find it. I get more traffic. I hopefully get someone to hire me to sell them a house via an FHA loan. And if you're dying to know chapulines, are classic Mexican delicacies of roasted grasshoppers. So if you'd like to try them, they are down there on that store. A little chile, a little limon, and they're pretty good. High in protein sustainable and good for you. So the more of these that you write, the more search engines could find. And as a goal, a starting point, I teach a blogging class. Uh, I looked on my schedule and it looks I'm, like I'm only teaching it once. Usually I teach it two or three times, but it looks like I'm only teaching it once this semester, uh, like in May or something. I teach a blogging class and we talk about all the nuances of blogging. And I don't remember the day, I don't remember the time, I don't remember the month. But you look it up on the catalog and it's, and it's in there. And in that class we go into detail about brainstorming. We take time to brainstorm for everyone and figure out ideas of what to write about, plus other, other things. But as a beginner, if you can't wait for the class, one post per month of at least 100 words. That's a very good starting point better would be two posts a month of 300 words. The more you do it, the better, because that's more content that you're putting out there to the world for Google and Bing and Yahoo, etc., to find your website. Your class is May 4th for four sessions. It's going to be repeated in June for two sessions. All right. Very cool. So, good. I thought it was uh, just one time, but I guess twice. And so, um, blogging very valuable. It creates more content. That's one possible goal for me to have. And again, I'm not saying you have to do all of these. The more of these that you do, the better. Get subscribers to my coupon newsletter. This is assuming I have a newsletter, perhaps a coupon newsletter. What that's saying is that newsletters equal people who have opted in, opt in, opt out, opted in, newsletters. You have enticed people to subscribe to your newsletter, and you're going to publish one at whatever time period you want, once a week, once a day, once a month, once a quarter, whatever. You're going to publish a newsletter, and that's simply sending out emails to a, to a distribution list, an address book of 10, or 50 or 200 people that have chosen to subscribe to your email newsletter and they've chosen to get marketed to. Most of the time you are trying to build an audience on people that, that don't know about you, that might not care about you, that might not know why they need to know about you. But with a newsletter, if they subscribe to you, they didn't if you do it right, they didn't accidentally subscribe to you. They've chosen to get the latest updates. We don't have time to talk about that in detail in this class. None of my classes, actually. I don't really talk about <coughs> emails. There's just so much to talk about. But you can research MailChimp or Constant Contact. There's many services that will do this, and by services, they're usually not free. Uh, they do give you sometimes starting packages. MailChimp, I believe, works for your first 2,000 subscribers, and then after that, you have to start paying. And I don't remember the price structure for Constant Contact, but all of these, this and many others, the point of this is for it to easily manage your email subscribers with advanced features like drip campaigns and all of that that, again, I don't have time to get into detail. But I want to get subscribers so that I mail them something, and they've already said they want to know about this. You've probably subscribed to some newsletters. I know, for example, I'm subscribed to the Fry's Electronics newsletter, and I love it, and I hate it. 
because every time I get it, I want to buy so much. And I have to be careful and not do that. But I keep up to date. Fries sends me a unique coupon code for this week's sales for me to save, you know, 20% on their products. And that's why it could be valuable for you as a business because you could be sending exclusive content, exclusive coupons to people. And that's how you also get them to subscribe. If you simply throw on your homepage, subscribe to us. Why? You know, just give us your email. Why? You need to say why it's relevant for people, what's in it for them to subscribe. So here I would say, entice people to subscribe with you know proper marketing such as subscribe for exclusive content and then the then the box there for them to put in their email some way <laughs> that entices them <coughs> exclusive I want to be exclusive I want to subscribe or I could write subscribe here for coupons not found anywhere else. Subscribe uh, to get the latest information before anyone else. Some way to entice people to give me your email to opt in so that I can start to market to them directly. Sites like MailChimp and Constant Contact are very good to help you manage all of that. Yes? Do they also have like I don't know, like templates and things yes. for, for layout for the newsletter? Definitely. Both these sites have templates because uh, that's important nowadays. A plain old black and white email newsletter is not that good. You want uh, a more well-designed one to show your professional. And both of those do it, and they're very powerful because it keeps a database of all your clients and, and how many times a particular client has clicked and how many times someone just ignored it and all of that. So it's very powerful. That's the whole concept of email marketing. Yes? Eye contact? Okay. Uh, you've used it? Yeah. Right, so. Eye contact. All right, so that's another one to look into. We have many options. It's up to you to research which is the best one for you. If, you, if anyone listens to the show, um, what was it called? Um, that one famous one on NPR that came out a little while ago about the investigation. Uh, no one remembers it, but MailChimp is is a big one. They've uh, been a sponsor on various shows. Um, so newsletters are another valuable thing to engage in to get conversions. In that case, people that visit my site that have not subscribed to my newsletter have not been converted. If they've subscribed to my newsletter, it's a conversion. So you apply the term conversion to anything that someone accomplishes. So it's a goal. But that's the buzzword in the industry. Then I've got get virtual clients or followers to come to my physical location. This one obviously does not apply to everyone. I need a physical location. I need a store on Main Street. I've got this bakery and I've got a store on Main Street. I want to get all my 7,000 followers on Twitter to come to the store, which of course is impossible because many of them could be in other cities, states, countries. But I want to try to get the ones that are nearby my physical location to actually come to my physical location. So if you've got for a physical location, traffic for a physical location could equal, of course, more sales. Or whatever you're trying to do, I've got this art show full of seven avant-garde artists that I want to promote. Well, I want the <coughs> local population to come to the gallery to actually see the art show in person. So I want to get real uh, follow. I want to get virtual followers to come locally. I can do that. I can check that on Facebook, on Twitter, etc. On Facebook, I can see 
uh, where my followers are at, where they exist in the real world. Uh, and that's because nowadays uh, so many of us use social media and so many of us give away so much of our information for free without even thinking about it or even knowing it. But every time you use Facebook and it's asking you at the top, what did you do today? And you write something gladly. What did you read? Are you watching anything? And you answer all of that gladly. You're giving all this information to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to all of these networks. And it's creating a huge database about you. And yes, that might sound scary to you, but for us as marketers, that's amazing. We want that. We want to know someone loves this book, and therefore I'm going to tweet about this book, post about this book, and it's going to reach the people that care about that book. I have a financial website. I want, I'm a CPA. I want to get clients. I can use Facebook to target my posts on Facebook to the people that have a strong interest in finance. Facebook knows that about you if you've willingly given that away. And I can use that as a marketer to send my message to the right people. And so I can use what, what Facebook and all of them know about people that they're actually in San Diego. Facebook's really powerful and really interesting and, and to some degree, if, if you think, scary, because it will know. I can create a Facebook targeted post that says, show this to people that have been in San Diego recently. Someone lives in Boston, but they came to San Diego to escape the, the snow and the rain, and Facebook knows that because people wrote on, on, when they're back on Boston, I'm going to take a vacation to San Diego. And then they come to San Diego and they use it in San Diego and they say, I'm in San Diego enjoying Coronado Bridge. And Facebook knows that and it tells us that. And as a marketer, I can target the people that came from elsewhere to San Diego or that were recently in San Diego. So that when they come back again next time, they come and visit my store because of all of this information that these networks gather. And when they come to my physical location, that's where I can sell them something or do whatever I'm trying to do. In my case, get clients to buy cupcakes. That's my ultimate goal. I am trying to employ as many taxes as I, tactics as I can to sell cupcakes. Ultimately, I'm about selling cupcakes. I went to culinary school and I got a loan and I've got my own shop on Main Street and I want to sell cupcakes. I want to sell baked goods. I have a lot to do in order to get to that point because I might have 10,000 followers on Twitter, but it's very hard for them to then click on that buy button. So the more that I do of all of these things, the higher chance I have of actually reaching my ultimate goal, which is to sell cupcakes. You should see that it's a long involved process to get from point A which is a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z, the follower visits the store and buys a product. Maybe I don't have a physical location. Maybe I ship my products to them. Well, no problem. I still want to get more hits to my home page. I still want to get traffic to my home page. And this list here is not things that you have to do in order or at all, but the more of these that you do, the better. That is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. Also, an emerging term that takes both into account is content marketing. Um, SEO is the buzzword of this industry. For a long time, it was only people in the industry really knew it, but now regular people are starting to hear that term, SEO, search engine optimization. People are finding out that they need SEO. Well, the next buzzword seems to be content marketing, which is I've got some content, I need to market it. My content is I, public, I, I sell cupcakes. I need to market that. I need to get more people to know about it so they can buy my cupcake. You can read that article. It's at Forbes.com. It has a lot of valuable information. Any questions on this part here, on page two of this document? Again, some of these things I cover in more detail in other classes. The social media stuff, I cover it in the social media class. The blog <coughs> stuff, I cover it in the blog class, etc.